Hey community, it's Pastor Brett with today's daily Bible reading. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want to uh, share in the heart of God. And part of what we've been learning through this series called Happy is that Jesus' way to happiness isn't about riches or success or all these ways that we measure it by our human circumstances, but it is ultimately in sharing the heart of God. When we share the heart of God in this world, we will be happy. The world will look at us and say they are blessed. They have been, they, God's fortune has smiled on them. Today's passage, today's reading is a very short one, but one that speaks to that very same purpose. What does it look like to share God's heart in this world? Amos 5, 24. Um, I don't know. For me, this has been a, a classic verse of scripture. Maybe it's about tradition or where you've grown up or things like this. But Amos 5.24 is just one of those beautiful classic passages where the prophet Amos speaking on behalf of God, or I should say God speaking through his prophet Amos to the people of Israel, is reminding them of his priorities. And God's priorities are not in, in religious gatherings and feasts and religious symbolism. God's priorities are for sharing his heart to our neighbors, to our community, to those around us. Let's dig in together. It's Amos 5, 24. Amos, God speaking through him, it says, But let justice roll down like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. Have you ever been out in nature and, and put your feet in a strong river? A big river, like it doesn't matter how strong you are, the current of that river will overwhelm you, right? If it's been a great rainy year and you go out to the Sierras and, and the rivers and the waterfalls are flowing, you can get a sense of how powerful they are, right? It, you step out and by the time the water is up to your calf, it's starting to push you. It's a, it's a powerful, overwhelming presence, God says, imagine a world, imagine a society in which justice flowed like a river. In which the way that we took care of others, righteousness, doing right by other people, doing right by our, our, our neighbors in the community, doing right by other people here at CBC and in our church family, it flowed like a stream. It was so powerful, it was irresistible. As soon as you stepped into that place, into this church home, you knew that, that their priority was the priority of God's heart. To see no one overlooked, no one left out, no one mistreated by individuals, by systems, by the, by the community as a whole. But instead, this was a place where the river of justice flowed through. As we think about our series, Happy, this is what I want us to, to cling to. Happy are those who partner with God's heart to meet the deep hurts of this world with his deep love. We are happy when we share God's heart for justice. When we share his heart to meet the world where it is, in the midst of deep wounds and hurts and pains, and we meet the world there on God's mission with his deep love. That's not a definition of happy we're going to see on the nightly news. That's not a definition of happy that you'll probably come across on a self-help book on Barnes & Noble or Amazon. But Jesus gives us this upside-down way of looking at the world. Upside-down by the perspective of this world. But as soon as we enter into it, we see that Jesus knew precisely what he was talking about. You will be happy. You will be blessed when not only do you share God's heart in terms of your, your feelings and affections, but you live it out. And being a peacemaker, bringing up, being a person who brings justice and fairness wherever you go. Corporately, what does that look like? As a church, part of, of what it meant to, uh, to, be, to, to do justice and to live righteously is ultimately to be a, the kind of place that doesn't show favoritism. And favoritism is one of those things that we hear about and we think, well, I don't. No, I treat everybody the same. I'm, 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 I'm friends with anybody. Everybody should have a fair shake. None of us think that we're guilty of favoritism until we look at our lives, until we see the people we hang out with. Who do we spend time with? Who do we trust? Who do we invite into our homes? 
And the moment you begin to, to reflect on those things, my guess is we're going to find, I know I will find, some themes of favoritism. Certain groups of people that I tend to resonate with or I tend to, to, to flock together with, that I tend to spend more time with. I just kind of have a default orientation towards those people. And typically, in our world, there's people that are more like me. More like that ha- share my mindset, that share my values, that share my worldview. Maybe they share my class, my race, my education, my background. The truth is our world is full of favoritism. It's not just in the hiring process or, or in the corporate world or in the secular. It's, it's in my heart. It's in who I, who I invite into my home. It's who I sit next to at church. It's who I'll strike up a conversation with in the courtyard after service. So maybe a baby step for us as a church community is to say, God, we want to be a place where justice flows like a mighty stream, where no one sees favoritism when they walk into this place. But the the ground is equal. The ground is level before the cross. And so maybe a first step for each one of us is to to do that little analysis in our hearts. Say, God, where am I showing favoritism? Where am am I surrounding myself with people who already look, think, act, or believe just like me here at CBC in my neighborhood. And God, help me be intentional this week in one or two small ways that I can begin to widen that circle out and begin to push against that that natural favoritism that's in each of us towards what's known, what's comfortable, what we already represent in so many ways. And when we do that, here's what I deeply believe. We will be a compelling, we will be an irresistible community where righteousness flows like a stream and justice like a river. God, may it be. Father, make us the kind of church that lives out your heart. Make me the kind of person who lives out your heart for justice and righteousness. May it be said of me and of us that we're doing right by others in the way that we treat them. And we share your heart for justice in our lives, in our church family, and in our community. In Jesus' good name. Amen. Thank you, church family. We can't wait to connect with you this Sunday as we continue our series called...